G'day viewers, uh, in my last video you would have seen me receive this box for Christmas um, it was all to the top and I'm now halfway through it took me four hours so far to get down this far and when I told the person who sent it to me he was amazed that I got through it so fast he said it would take him all the winter to get through it I wanted to see a video on how I do it and there's probably a lot of other people also that are wondering how you get gold out of these CD writers and readers. So I'm going to do my best to show you. I know a lot of you don't like the GoPro um, but I need to be hands free. Um, I was told that maybe there's film on the lens uh, I've cleaned the lens now, so I'm hoping it's looking nice and clear for you. Uh, I'm using my chest mount instead of my head mount because with the head mount I can't see exactly where it's facing and I want to know that you guys can see everything and I'll need to be working in close up so you can see detail. So the only way I can do that is with a chest mount. Um, so please let me know if this is better footage Basically what I'm after Is the gold laser diode you can see one there So what I've done is I've picked out Nothing in particular just a let's See if I can show you there a handful just grab a big handful these are What I'm looking for See if I can open it carefully without them going everywhere. Now some of these are very small. Some of these are flat. Some of these are round and shallow. Some of these are quite big. Like any e-waste, a lot depends on the quality of the product you're doing, the age of the product you're doing. There's a uh, one here which is flat and there's barely anything to it, which is normal, it's just a little bit of gold on the outside and some fingers. So I'm hoping that what I've picked out is just a uh, um, what do you call it, a variety of different sorts. I haven't actually fossicked through the box to show you anything, I've just grabbed a handful. Some of them have none at all. I've got to leave this open so I can put them in. And what I do is I put this away from me where I can't knock it by accident. So I've got that up on my desk there. So let's start. Just grab the first one. Now I have to turn the light on. I'm hoping that's better for you. So what you need, I, what I use is some little wire cutters to get into the intricate little spots. Some bigger wire cutters, because there's times where you're gonna need to be forceful with the, with the uh, cast aluminum. And a tiny little screwdriver. Sometimes you may also need a hobby knife. So once you've got a bit of experience you can automatically look straight to where you need to be. Like the right there, that's where there's one there and one there. You can tell by the round section. There would have also been one there in a higher quality uh, device. There are other places you can find one, sometimes a little flat one under there where there's a rectangle. So basically, there's also some copper. Basically, I just get my little screwdriver and I start undoing any screws that need undoing. Um, I could go straight to the, the laser diodes and pick those out, but we're also looking for any other values, some bits of copper, some um, brass maybe, uh, some 
maybe ribbon with gold on it. So I just undo everything. Uh, it's also therapeutic for me. I actually I quite like doing this. Some people don't have the patience for stripping and scrapping. I love it. The more to pull apart, the better in my book. So I'm just looking for any screws. I do this while I'm watching TV. So for those who say, is it really worth your time doing this? Well, my time is watching TV and I'm just doing this in the process. If anything, I can't sit still and do nothing. I like to fidget. So this is really good for me because it gives me something to do while I'm watching TV. So I don't know if you can see these little screws that I'm doing. There's little ones all over the place. So there's one here, there's one there. The ones I've already undone as well. There's one down here. So, so I just look for screws and just when I'm sure that I've got them all, then I start dismantling it. Um, in looking back at my recent footage of videos I've made, it's uh, very obvious that I seem to be deep breathing. Some of you have picked up on it. I'm very, uh, I'm a very bad asthmatic. I'm quite often short of breath. And I've also, as you've known, stacked on a lot of weight, which isn't helping. So I apologize if the video sound like I'm coming across deep breathing. I'm pretty conscious of it and I, I try and make an effort not to do it on video. I do have Ventolins now which I'm going to be taking on a regular basis to see if that helps. Okay, so I think I've undone all this copper. It's only a thin sheet but it all adds up. So I've got a container that I put the copper in. Uh, some of these are plastic, like this one, and some of them are cast. I think it's zinc, or it could be what's known as pop metal, which is a combination of zinc and aluminium, other such metals or it could just be cast aluminium. Either way, it goes in my cast aluminium bucket. So here, we have a resistor. So I'll take that off. That's what I mean by other values. They've got silver in these. I've got a video where I did these. And then here is one of the laser diodes. It's one of the cheaper model. It's not very thick. It's just a very thin, square, Thing. and what I do is I got my little cutters and I just cut one side to legs and it fell off so it's on the floor I'll get that in a second looks like there's a little bit more there sometimes I even just cut the plastic and put the whole thing in with my IC bucket much easier when you're dealing with intricate little bits and pieces. So I've got a, an IC there. I'll deal with these later. The main thing is to show you how to get to the, the diodes. But you can see that little IC chip there. There are some more resistors. So I'll, I'll get my little pen torch onto those, heat them up and take them off. These connectors here sometimes have gold sometimes don't. The easiest way to tell is when you take the ribbon out. If the ribbon has gold, then these will definitely have gold. If the ribbon doesn't have gold, there's a 99% chance these don't have gold, because usually gold meets gold. That's the rule that I've noticed. However, you can tell, I'm hoping you can see on video, there is gold in there. I didn't have ribbon in all of these. Um, a lot of them that were sent to me did have ribbon and as I pulled the ribbon out I automatically took the plugs with it because then I knew gold and gold. Some of them didn't have a ribbon and this is one of them so I've just had to take out the little plastic thingy that flips up and down. 
and just look inside and you can see there's gold in there there's another resistor here again I'll deal with these off camera I'll show you where the gold is but I'm most, in this video I'm, I'm mostly after the diodes and any other values like another resistor there so the person that sent me these said he takes his time to get every bit of gold well so do I but because I know where it is it doesn't take me all that long and that's the whole purpose of me making this video to show where to look so there's the two round sections you look for there's a laser diode in there in each one of those you can see the gold from here already I don't want to trim the legs because the legs are also gold plated can you see that so I try not to trim away the legs if possible I try and peel the tape off if the, if the ribbon will come off nice and easy great but if it's stubborn I'd prefer to leave a bit of ribbon on there and know that I haven't taken away any of those gold legs. So, just looking for any more screws. Sometimes when you take one thing off, it leaves something else exposed to another screw. And in time, if you do enough of these, you'll get faster and more efficient at it. Um, for those who are new to it, it's, it's kind of hard when you're, you're going from a good quality one to a cheap one because then you're looking for the gold and can't find it, it's because there isn't any. So, you can, you can generally tell just as soon as you pick one up if there's going to be gold in there or not. Um, like I said, look, I'll just pick one up now, any old one will do, and straight away I can see those two circle parts you can see the ribbon goes around in a circle and back again straight away you know that's where the two diodes are going to be there could be a third one a little flat one under this section here so in, in experience in time you'll get to know straight away where they are I'll just keep undoing all the screws the main reason why I completely dismantle it even though I could go straight for the diode is because on this particular one, the ones like this, this cast will go in my cast bucket. So I need to take off everything and have just the cast left alone. Now, this section here has no gold. I've never come across any that have gold. There is magnets in there. I don't know if you can see that, it's just sticking by itself. There's little square magnets, one that side and one that side. They're very strong, I'm pretty sure they might be neodymium. They're very, very tiny, so if the ones in hard drives are too big and cumbersome for you, um, these are a good little m magnet to get. And the whole lot just pries off. The only place there could be gold on this now is, like I said, on this little square rectangular some are square, some are rectangular. Uh, the only way to find that out is to just trim away at some of this solder, pull the paper forward. I don't think there is any on there, but I'm just doing this to show you. No, there's not. So this to me is useless. If you wanted to get the magnets out, you can. I've got so many magnets. I'll just show you where they are. So you've got a bit of tin here to peel away. Oh, some of them are quite hard to get to. Here we go. So you peel the tin off. And then you've got your main mechanism in the middle here, which will just pull out. Now there's tiny, tiny little copper windings in there. Too fiddly for me. And there's the magnet, so there's one magnet here, one magnet here, and it looks like there's a, a screw holding those in, no, there's not though. So you can just get your screwdriver or, or cutters or whatever it is you're using, a little bit fiddly, try and get it where it's not going to... Um, 
rest against the other metal, so a bigger pair might be easier. And there we go. One square magnet, or what's rectangular, very close to a square. And they are very, very strong magnets. They're a good little magnet for testing out things. Um, I guess you could glue it on the back of a pencil or something to make it more easier to, to find and to use. They're very strong, they're very good magnets. Definitely ne neodymium. And now this is rubbish, there's nothing else on here. There's no magnets, there's nothing. And so now we're getting down to the bones of it. You can see that there's a plate, or you can see there's a gap in here, which means that part will come away from this part. So simply get your cutters in there. Make sure you haven't got any screws left in there. And there we go. Now that round section is the base of the diode. There's the top of the diode. Again, I could pull away some of that ribbon to show you, but I don't want to go hacking into the legs. I'd rather leave the gold legs exposed. I'll see if it'll just tear off nice and easily. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. And there you can see the gold diode. Now with these aluminium ones, you need a little bit of strength. So what you want to do is get the cutters just in the edge here. You don't want to hack into the gold. You just want to get rid of the, just put a crack across the aluminium. So just here, bit of brute strength. Sometimes they're really hard, sometimes they're soft, or well, that one just broke away nice and easy. Sometimes I've had to put a lot of strength into them. So there's the diode. But this is one of the smaller ones that I showed you. Sometimes you can get your little cutters and just cut off this back part, which is, I'm guessing, aluminium. And it could be tin. Because you want a, as a cleaner mix as possible when you do your, your process. But there is gold in there, so you be careful, don't just hack into it. Just peel it off until it snaps away. And there's now a nice clean diode with hardly any other metal on it. There's a little bit of solder on there, but I'd rather do that with, uh, I'd get rid of that with hydrochloric acid rather than cut it away because of these little gold legs in there. I'm not sure if you can see them very well on camera. So there's one diode and it goes in my little container. Then you got the same deal with this one. Again, there's a little plate, this gap that you can see here is a plate. And that one there should also separate. It's a bit fiddly to get to. And there it goes, it comes out. So now, apart from a tiny bit of glass for the prisms and so on, I generally don't have any trouble putting this in uh, straight in aluminium, cast aluminium, but there is a bit of steel here first. I'll deal with this. Again, you can see there's the base of the diode. That's the part I'll just carefully cut away with the small cutters. There's the top. And you just want to cut uh, a gap across the aluminium because these are like press fit into it. And there's about three or four of these under the couch because they've dropped down and rolled under the couch. As they do, they can't roll forward, they have to roll backwards under the couch. I guess that's Murphy's Law or whatever you want to call it. So now it's easier with the smaller cutters to grip hold of. And just peel it away from the aluminium. So I'm now left with another nice clean diode, except it's got that thing on the back. And there's a bit of glass in that hole. It's where the laser comes out. So the wires connect onto these legs. This creates the laser. The laser comes out the little glass bit there. So just give this a gentle squeeze all the way around 
until it wants to pry off. It doesn't matter a whole lot if you leave this on. It just means you can have extra stuff to deal with when you do the solution. Iron or aluminium or whatever it could be. I personally rather just spend a few seconds or a minute or two now trying to get this off like that. So there's no gold in there. And I'm now left with a nice clean laser diode. There's my bucket, little container. So now I'm just going to get rid of this bit of tin that's on here. Bit of ribbon. There shouldn't be any gold on this ribbon as far as I can remember. No. There might be, like I said before, a little flat piece of gold under here. So, pry off this aluminium and have a look. Now that is ready for the aluminium bucket, apart from a little bit of plastic just here. Straight into my cast aluminium bucket. This here might have nothing under it, but we'll have a look anyway. So you just, can you see the flat plate and there's a, a recess in this bottom section. So you just hook into there. And away comes the aluminium. And this is where there might be a little flat Piece of, like the one in the box that I showed you and of course that fell on the floor or so this happens to me constantly I've got to sweep up the floor when I'm finished and I find all the little bits and pieces I've dropped but uh, so now we've got two nice magnets I don't normally keep them I'll keep those two alright so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do the handful that I've picked out okay handful just here otherwise if I was to do the whole box it would be a four hour video there's uh, something that I want to show you there's only one that I particularly pulled aside to show you and I'll show you why so this one here has one of the nice big diodes it's a rather good sized diode it's one of those big ones that I pulled out of the container to show you and i to find my screwdriver, which is rolled away from me. So this is all plastic as opposed to the aluminium one. And there's just a little screw here holding it in. Sometimes there's a couple of screws. Yeah, I had to drop my screwdriver. When you've got big Neanderthal fingers like I've got, it makes it a bit hard. I often wish I had little skinny fingers. So I'm going to try and hook out this thing now that I've undone the screw. Like that. And I'll go through the rest of this in a minute. There's probably just this only one in there. I'll just trim off some of this ribbon if it comes off easy. Now we've got this plate that was holding it in that needs to come off because that's not gold and it's pretty much glued on there I don't know if you can tell but there's a big wad of glue here so they've pretty much just glued it on there so grab a hold of it with the pliers and just pull it and away it comes now we're left with a nice big laser diode all gold plated nice now the reason why I pulled one particular one aside to show you is exactly the same as that last one, but not gold. This will give you an example of cheaper quality to good quality, just like anything else in the waste industry. So there's the plate that was holding it on, and there's the diode. Let's see if I can get it out. And you can see it's not gold, it's just steel. There's no gold anywhere on it. There may be some inside, 
but not on the outside. So I'll put this aside for a second. It looks like there could be a tiny bit of gold inside when you peel this mask away. This is a ribbon wire. Yeah, there's definitely a little bit inside. So with these ones, they're using as little gold as possible. And you need the force of a good pair of cutters. It's hard to cut something that's round, it keeps wanting to slide, but this is where you need a good lot of force. Oh. And I've cut through the outer part, exposing the gold inside. It's a bit crushed, but that's all right. Gold is gold no matter what form it comes in. It's uh, pretty hard not to crush it because you do need a bit of force to break it. And there's the diode. So it's just one of the flatter, narrower ones inside a casing, whereas the other ones are all got a casing with gold plated too. This is the part on the back that you peel away, if you can. If you can't, it doesn't matter, but I like to have a nice clean solution. I don't want other contaminants in there. So it's a bit muncicated now, I've hacked into it, but it's pretty much the same thing. Same as, I'll drop this in there and we'll grab one the same. Same as one of these. It's just all muncicated because I crushed it. All right, so that was uh, to show you how you can look at it straight away and identify where it's going to be and whether or not it's going to be all gold plated or whether it's a little bit. This is obviously a cheaper quality. I mean, you can tell by using plastic as opposed to aluminium. For starters, it's going to be a cheap quality. There's the little plate that I said you can sometimes take off. This is square. Uh, this doesn't appear to have any gold on it. It looks like it could be silver in that circle there. And you'll know straight away when it's gold, you'll see it on there. There's no gold in these pins, and there's really not much to look on this now. As I said, some of these things will have one diode, if any at all. Some will have two, some will have three. I've not seen more than three. There could be one out there somewhere. So there's no gold any, any, anywhere on this now at all. It's just that one thing. So there's no point in me even undoing them screws because I can't put this in cast, it's only plastic and there's no more values to take off it. So under here, it's just the same thing as before. So I'll just pull it apart to show you. This is just the section where the magnets were. That's the centerpiece that I took out and then either side of it is a magnet. And there's nothing on here at all. So that's one of the cheaper quality ones. So you can get some plastic ones that have good quality. This one here might not might be a nice big diode because it's got this square block. It looks like a decent sized block. So not all plastic ones are cheap quality. They're just cheaper. Anyway. So we'll just carry on. Oh, once I get through the ones I pulled out of the box, that'll be the end of the video. Uh, repetition is the best way to learn. So if I do something over and over and over, some of you guys might find it easier to learn. So there's a little IC chip. Uh, there is a little bit of gold on this board. Only a little bit, but for some people, that's you know, they're happy to keep every single bit. Um, I do. Gold is gold at the end of the day. Uh, however, it's not all across the board, it's only on this half, so where that white part is. There's a, a little tiny dot there and a big circle there. It's only flashing. So, flashing isn't very good. I know to newcomers it looks impressive oh look at all that gold on the board but seriously flashing is so minimal some say it's not worth keeping however well, there's some MLCCs on there MLCCs 
I can see quite a few in there. And I'm just going to chop this board across where the white section is. I will get these MLCCs off at a later time. And this piece of board with my bo uh, gold on there can go into my little container that I'm keeping bits of gold as I scrap. It all gets treated the same way, so it just goes in there. Yeah, my little screwdriver's taken off again. Here it is. So, time to un undo screws again. Sometimes there's about six, sometimes there's more. Yeah, I'm hoping you guys are able to see this really clear near or better, closer up than when I'm using my head cam. Head cam might be right for detecting or something, but I really don't think it's any good for this type of thing. It's uh, a bit awkward for me to use it though because of my fat gut. If I was standing up doing something, all you'd see is my gut. So there's a bit of gold on this board. So I'm just gently peeling it off and underneath is one of the flat diodes. That goes in my little container. And this is the square diode. This one I didn't drop on the floor, thank Christ. And you can see in there, clearly, there's gold. And I dropped it. Tell you what, I wish I had a dollar for every time I drop something on the floor. It's gonna be down here somewhere, I'll sweep it later and get it back. All right, now you see this little plastic flap that goes up and down on these mounts. I like to just pull it out with the pliers, cutters, and look inside and I can see gold in there. Not much, I've seen better boards, but very, very little, it's like on the tips. You can see the base of these are steel, shiny, but just on the tip there's some gold. Not enough for me to bother with. I mean, that goes through too much nitric acid dissolving all the steel for such a tiny amount of, of uh, metal. So I'm just going to chop off the section with the, the flashing on it and get rid of the section where the pins were because there's no gold there. Getting all the values out of this. If you wanted every single bit, you could keep that bit, uh, those pins. But uh, at some stage, you have to weigh up the cost versus the reward. So yes, you get a bit of gold out of it, but you'll use more in acid to get it than what it's worth. And that can only come with experience. This is uh, metal, it's not brass or anything. It looks like it's got a tinge to it, color to it, but it's not. So in there, you can see another nice big diode. There's a screw here, so I undo the screw, holding it in. So you definitely need a tiny little Phillips screwdriver for these. There's the little bracket that was holding it in. And there you can see it better. The nice big diode that's in there. And uh, the tip of it is attached to this plate. So, just work at it with the cutters. And out it comes. I'll put this aside for a second. There's a diode inside there. Peel away some of this ribbon, you'll be able to see in there. So, again, you need to get some cutters and just make a crack across the aluminium, just enough to get the, the diode out. So 
sometimes it takes a whole lot of effort and sometimes they crack quite easily. There we go. There's the diode. There's the metal on the back with the little glass window. Just give it a crack and off it comes. That was nice and easy. There's the back of the diode, there's the front of the diode. Now inside that same spot is where that bigger section is. So what's happened is the diode has actually come out of the housing. So, crack this bit of aluminium here, get that out of our way. And we should be able to pull the housing out. And there it is. You can see the, the hole inside where the diode was sitting. And there's a nice gold plated housing. And there's no more in there at all. So now it's just a matter of undoing all the screws, getting down to the aluminium. It may not be a whole lot if you've only got a handful of these to do. When you've got a bucket full, like a, like a box full, like I've got here, it mounts up the amount of aluminium, cast aluminium you get. And I've already got cast aluminium from doing hard drives. So, you know, the more the better. The screws just want to be a bit of a pain. Yeah, there's always one in every crowd. Maybe a bit, a bit more force to undo it. There we go. Bit of persuasion. One this side, it's already done. Again, there's nothing in this section here. It's just the magnets in there. And we're down to aluminium. It looks like there might be another diode here. Yep. And in, in there, right there, underneath that ribbon. So, because there's no section to pull out, you need to cut through the whole lot. Oh. Here's the diode, throw this in cast aluminium, and there's the diode there, it's a skinny little one. Needs a bit more persuasion. Out it comes. Take the little bit of metal backing off. It's the same thing over and over. So the only real difference between a pile of these is whether there's one, two, or three, or none. Again, there's another clean diode. I'm hoping to get a nice little pile of these together so I can do a video showing exactly how much gold can be got from these. So my little container is piling up. Getting quite a few in there. I'd say there's probably about 50 grams at the moment. And when I've got a whole box of them, I'm definitely going to end up with a nice amount. Alright, so getting back to this now. The diodes have been removed. There might be a little square one under there. Just take this ribbon back and we'll be able to see. Okay, this is another silver one. You can see it clearly there. 
you saw the last one how much gold was on it and this one it's silver whether it's actually silver metal I don't know but I'm talking about silver colour most likely a silver metal who knows it could be palladium or anything but not in a plastic one I wouldn't think it would be as cheap as possible I will put that aside in case it's silver metal and this now just goes into the bin rubbish on to the next one so try and locate the screws sometimes they're hidden or they're black and hard to find hope this isn't too boring for you guys doing the same thing over and over and over So there's a diode in there. Looks like there's only one on this one. A little screw here. There's a tin plate. Usually the the ribbon goes to something. So there's a gold one. You see there's a definite difference between the one we just did a second ago and this one. You can see the gold in it. If you're not sure where things are, just follow the ribbon wire. Because the ribbon wire always goes to something. Whether it's good or bad, there's always something on the end of the ribbon wire. So... This is one of the cheapest, nastiest ones you can get. The tiny little square ones. aside for a second you just get your cutters into it and away it comes see if I don't drop this one on the floor I want to be able to show you at least one of them alright so on the back there's a minimal tiny little bit of gold that you can see on the front I don't know if putting these straight in nitric acid will do the job or whether the gold is encased it looks like it might be encased in like plastic film or something so what I do is I put all these in with my IC chips. They can be burnt and crushed with my IC chips. But there's definitely gold fire, gold bond wires in there. I can see, I think it's three or four from each side. So on this side going to the middle and on that side going to the middle. There's definitely bond wires in there. So that goes in there with my IC chips. And there's nothing else on that. There's another diode here. And then the rest of that is just all the section where the magnets are. So we'll get this one out. Just cut the plastic away to get to it. bit of force and out it comes. Huh? Cut this little plastic away. Alright, so we're down to the aluminium. The casing that's holding it. Whether or not it's going to be a big one or a small one, I don't yet know. But given the depth of the aluminium, I'd say it might be a decent sized one. So, there's the base of it. There's the top of it. Find the thinnest part so you're not going to be cutting through a whole pile of metal. Just give it a good crack. Try not to have the tip too far in the middle because you don't want to massacre the diode. So I've got this cracked open and it looks like it's going to be a tiny little diode.
So it's just a little flat one. Hopefully you can see that. It's got a bit of plastic around it. But that won't matter, the nitric acid will get to that. So that goes in my container here with the diodes. So that was pretty much the same as this black one here. Right, on to the next one, there's about 10 here more to go. Might not even go through all of them on, on video because repetitious. I'm just doing enough for you guys to get an example of all the different types. And as I said, repetition is the key to learning. The more you see something done or the more you do something, the more chance of learning and remembering. You can see how I fly through these pretty quickly. I mean, I'm doing it slow on video. If I wasn't filming, I'd be, I'd be zipping through them. Because there's really not a lot to it. Once you know what to leave and what to go for, so there's no point in going through all this here because there's no value in there unless, unless you're after the magnets. There's nothing else in there whatsoever worth going for. Nothing in there. So there's a little square diode like the one we just did a second ago. I don't know if it's going to be silver or gold. At this stage it looks like it might be silver in colour. There's a bit of gold on the back of it. So there I'll go in my IC chips. Okay, we've got some copper on here to recover. Sometimes you need to push hard and get it to crack. There we go. Because they put Loctite on these. I don't know why. Can't see how it would ever come apart. So there's a the little piece of copper. And then the copper container. There's a little IC chip. And there's some MLCCs on there and there's also some resistors, three resistors. So I'll peel this away and I'll, I'll do this away off camera. This is one of those um, connectors that had ribbon in it and I don't know if it's gold or not because I didn't see the ribbon that came out. So I take the plastic out and I can see that that's just steel. There's no gold in that one. Here's my two diodes. But I still need to get rid of all this so I can get to the cover of the aluminium. And this part's rubbish. Sometimes there's screws on the back holding it in. Yep. There's one in here. Okay. 
Thanks for the coffee. Thank you. Okay, so now we're just gonna get this bit of tin off. Just stuff the tin, it's not aluminium. I don't worry about this little bit of glass. You can hook it out if you want to. The scrapyard hasn't complained about them yet. So you've got this little plate on here. There's nothing in there, that's aluminium, so that goes in my bucket container for aluminium. There's a screw, a couple of screws there, holding these diodes in place. Now that should come away, like that, there's the base of the diode, there's the top of the diode, it looks like there's a gap between this so this might be able to come away, yep, it's good, there's less to fight, fight with to get the diode out. You can see the base a lot more clearly. So I find the smallest place to cut through and the lowest. See up here is a lot thicker, down here is thinner. So I'll cut through this end. It doesn't make it as easy as possible. That broke away quite easily. So that's clearly a different type of cast. It's probably more likely zinc because it cuts so easily. There's the diode. Take the base off. Again, you don't have to if you don't want to. It's a very fiddly little job. But I always recommend in any solution that you do to have as clean a solution as possible. It makes life so much easier, especially when you're learning. You're more likely to encounter problems when you've got contaminants that only experience can deal with, otherwise you have trouble getting your gold back. So now we've got another nice, clean diode. It's just got some ribbon on there, that's no big deal. It's not going to affect anything. And again, I, I try not to peel that off if I can help it because of the legs in there. You can see the gold legs. I'm happy just to leave that on there and then soak these in hydrochloric acid to get rid of a little bit of solder that's there. And back to this here. There's another diode here. That came off quite easily. You can see the diode real easy now. And you see there's a plate. So we're just going to get the cutters onto there and the plate should come away like that. Take this ribbon off, now this can go straight in my cast aluminium container. It's only a thin diode this one, but that's okay. Cut just through the side of the metal, you don't want to damage it too much. It's not going to matter if you damage it, but just try and keep them in good nick. And there's the diode. Take the back off. These little cutters are the best. They only cost like five dollars or something on Wish. I bought a deal of uh, about ten pairs for like, I think it was twenty-five dollars or something. You buy a bulk amount. It's a nice clean diode. I'm getting quite a pile together now. Now this one here is a beauty. I was glad I pulled this one out. I don't know what it, what its function is but there's a big gold plated section on top here. 
So far I've come across about three of these. Can't imagine what it does or why it's there. Doesn't seem to be connected to any wiring. It's just got some sticky stuff holding on there. It's not brass. When you put it against brass, you can clearly see the difference in colour. So I'm just taking this rubber glue backing off that was glued to it. It's definitely gold plated. Be nice if that was solid gold, but it's not. I can't, I can't for the life of me figure out what its function was. No wiring going to it at all. But I'll put that in there anyway. I was doubtful at first and I put it alongside some brass and there's a clear difference in colour. There's no gold in these pins here. There's nothing here, that's just where the magnets are. So the only diode is there. You can even see the round shape of the moulded plastic. So, let's get these screws out. Just in case something's hidden in there. No, it's not likely, but I like to be thorough. And you never know, they could surprise you with something hidden in there. For the sake of taking a couple of screws off, it's better to be sure. No, it's just all the same thing. Uh, at least now I can, it makes it easier to get to the diode. To continue taking stuff off. If, if, for no other reason than for something to do, because I enjoy doing this. So the diode's in there. There might be a little square diode on top here, it looks like it could be. Yeah, it's a silver one. Put that aside. There's the diode, you can see the round channel going through there. Quite awkward to get onto this one. There it is there. It's just another small one. And there's the top, there's the base. I hope some of you guys are learning from this. I, I've seen a lot of people do videos on these diodes, the processing them, but I haven't seen too many people actually showing how to get them out of the, the readers. And There's been a couple of short clips of it, but not in the detail that I'm showing. So there we go, there's another nice clean diode. A little bit of solder, which is hydrochloric acid, will remove. Then that ribbon will fall away as well. Starting to get a little collection together now. Getting close to about 100 grams. It's not going to be a huge batch, but I've still got oh, half a box to go through. And a few more here that I've pulled out already. There will be. Uh, Quite a nice little bar at the end of it all. Enough to work out a yield rate to show you what you get from them. I think personally that they are worth the effort. I know a lot of people like E-Waste Ben, he doesn't go to the effort um, of taking out the diodes. However, he's got a lot of work. He's got a lot of scrap to go through. And time is of the essence for him. His time is better spent elsewhere. I totally get that. But I don't have the amount of scrap that E-Waste Ben has. So I can afford to get there every little bit. Plus, I do it for gold recovery, so I want every ounce of gold. 
but he is more of a, he sells the boards that he does. And it's more important for him to continue getting boards than to be worrying about gold recovery. And when you've got the quality and quantity that he's got, you can worry about all the choice parts like CPUs and RAM sticks without worrying about little things like this. So, you know, it's yeah, down to each person's uh, situation, I guess. If I had the amount of e-waste that he's got, I probably wouldn't be going for these either. Because there's not, not enough time in the day to process it all. I've got all the time in the world. Alright, so try and get this little plate off. There's one diode in there. You can see it's going to be a small one. The base finishes just here. Alright, I'll put this down for a sec. Get the big cutters onto it. I haven't found any easier way. There may be an easier way. Someone may know. If you do know of an easier way, please let us all know. The only way I know is to manually chop them out. There's the diode. There's the base of it. But in my experience, these are definitely worth doing. There's a lot worse things, a lot lower yields that you could be doing. This is up there with the higher quality things to do. It's just a lot of fiddly things that most people don't have the time or patience for. There's a nice clean back and front. Yeah, let's see if there's any more on here. Yep, there's one right there. The telltale round section, you can tell it straight away. If not, like I said, follow the ribbon wire. The ribbon wire goes to it. The ribbon wire will always go to something. That's how I started out when I didn't really know these things very well. I just thought to myself, well, if I follow the wire, the wire must go to something. And sure enough, sometimes it goes to something that's useless, and sometimes it goes to something good, but it always goes to something. So there's a little IC chip there. I'll take that off in a minute, I'll put it aside. And all this here is no good, that's just where your magnets are. There's this little flat section here. Let's see if it's gold or silver. When I say silver, I don't necessarily mean silver metal. In case, you know, it's not actually silver, I don't want people thinking I'm talking crap. I'm just talking about silver colour. I've never tested them for silver to find out if they are silver metal. This one's not even worth it, it's just deteriorating. Maybe if I can break the plate away. see what's underneath it. There is a screw holding it on which is why I'm battling with it. No, nothing. Alright, so again the only reason why I'm mucking around with all this section which is no good is to be able to get the clean um, cast aluminium. Okay, now I'm just going to get this last diode out. I 
hope you can tell the difference like when it was there. You can see the line where it separates the two. Clearly you can see it. I don't know about on camera, but I can see it. So this is now just cast. Find a good spot to cut through. keep going to get a good spot to hold on to and then realise I'll probably out of view of the camera so come on through it goes so this remaining bit's cast there's the diode so I'm pretty sure he's getting the gist of this now Nice clean back and front. Right, there's really nothing different. All of these are going to be the same thing that I've just showed you. There's, uh, there's nothing here that's going to stand out differently to anything else. I'll just focus on these pins for you for a second. This one here, I can clearly see is gold inside. So what I normally do is just get my little cutters or the big ones and just twist it. And the pins it should snap off. And I put this in my little container with gold. Whereas some of these, you can see are not gold. That little bit of brown plastic stayed in there, which is unfortunate because it's making it hard to see. So, now that I've taken a bit of the plastic off the side, I can see there's no gold. It's just steel. So that one there goes in the trash. That's the easiest way I've found to find out these, apart from saving the ribbon as it's coming out. It's the best thing I can suggest to you guys. As the ribbon comes out, check to see if it's gold. If it's gold ribbon, it's going to be gold pins. And then you can straight away dismantle it. Now this is gold, it stands out clearly. There's definitely gold in there. So, give it a bit of a break. You can use a heat gun if you want. There's all kinds of ways you can get these out. This is where my little container of gold bits goes. And I'll try and do this on camera. So I hold it over my container. Okay, some of the pins fall. Anything with little bits of gold pins or gold on boards, whatever, it just goes in this container. And it's clean. So, the last few, I'll just focus on that. This one here, I can see there's nothing in there, it's just steel. And it's not surprising because it's plastic. There's a nice MLCC there, so I'll save that. Put that one here for a second. And I can just tuck this whole board away. There's a screw that I haven't done there, but trying to be quick for the camera. It's very good. I'll undo that screw in a second. There's another one here without the ribbon. I just grab hold of the plastic, pull it out, and I can see clearly there's gold in there. That's good. So I give me a little container back. Trim it off straight into the container. Yeah, you may have a different way of collecting your pins. If you're trying to put your pins all in one container, then that's fine. Now that's clean. I do have a container of gold pins, but only the really good, good quality gold ones. 
they're not um, medical grade or uh, anything like that. They're not military grade, but any nice quote coated pins that I get, I put in there. Otherwise, the rest of them just go straight into that container. <laughs> so again, there's nothing new about this one. There's the round section there, that's where the diode is. Most likely another one underneath that. Some aluminium here to keep. I could even take that off now because there's no screws holding it on that I can see. This is a nice thick piece of aluminium. Yes, there's a diode there. Get this aluminium off here. So one diode, two diodes, sometimes there's a third. It could be a square one under here. Yep. And that's got gold on it. And uh, that's about it. The last one here. Screws on it. A diode there. You can see the gold legs in there. I hope you can see them, I can see them. And that's it, so it's the same thing over and over and over. Another IC chip just here. Put that in my ICs. So I'm going to leave the video there and uh, sweep up the floor, get the parts I lost. I hope you enjoyed this, I hope the person that wanted to see this has learnt something. I hope the rest of you have learnt something. Um, I'm well, sure there's a few things here now to sort out that I took off. So I'll do that and then I'll carry on with the box and just keep going until it's finished. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope it wasn't too boring. Now, I'm trying to get videos out to you while it's hot. The only way I can do that is inside like this. Um, so thanks again. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.